I'm Andy Pryor. I'm a software developer at Huddle. Uh, I've been with Huddle six months, so I don't know everything, but um, you know, throw some questions at me and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, some background on Huddle. Huddle is a sports video editing software company. So uh, it was founded in 2006 in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, the three founders are still actively involved in the company. Um, the kind of initial idea was one of the founders was uh, working for the University of Nebraska football program and he saw them distributing DVDs out to all the players. and. Thought there'd be a way to automate this, so Huddle started as a football product and was a football product for a long time. They pivoted to focus on high school sports around 2009, and that was when uh, the growth tra trajectory really pointed up. Um, in the last two years or so, we've had more t more sports start using the Huddle product for other, um, you know, for for their own video, and uh, we kind of realized that there was a difference between clip-based video, which is what you would watch football, which would be like five to ten second clips, and flow-based video, which would be longer continuous uh, action uh, you know, pieces of video. So we call that Flow Video, and that's the app I'm going to demo today. Um, and let me try to bring that up and get the uh, get basketball playing for you. As I was mentioning, I'm going to demo the basketball app. So this is primarily a coaching tool. Um, our clients are basically coaches and uh, our high schools, uh, everything from youth youth and club all the way up to elite sports. But what I'm gonna demo is primarily targeted for high school basketball. So uh, if I'm a coach and I'm at my game, uh, this is our standard suggested setup. This hardware comes from a third party. Um, and I've got just an iPad uh, mounted in here. And I'm gonna go and find my game that I wanna film for. So this is Omaha Mobile Demo Capture. I'm gonna go tag and film this game. There's another way to get to this screen directly. I kinda navigate it out and around, but uh, I'm gonna just click film the game. And it's going to come up with my filming. Uh, yeah, so you guys are on camera. So I just tap to record here. Um, I work primarily on the back end, so a lot of the kind of technical tidbits that I'm going to give are going to be related to video. But feel free to ask any questions uh, at any time. Feel you know, interrupt, no worries. So what we're doing now is uh, filming at 30 frames per second at 720p, and we're automatically uploading to our S3 storage uh, as, we're, uh, as we're filming. If you don't have Wi-Fi, it's OK. We'll just catch it on the device, and we'll upload it when you can uh, upload it. So uh, you see there, we got the, uh, th those are your seconds that have been uploaded versus your seconds recorded. So I can stop filming. Uh, this would be like for a timeout, resume filming. And capture is pretty, um, pretty simple. So like I said, the 720p is being uploaded to S3. Now, if uh, at the end of the game, when I'm done filming, I exit and mark the game is over, all the video is going to be uploaded to S3, and it's going to uh, kick off our rendering pipeline. So we use uh, Amazon EC2 to have, we have an auto-scaling farm that um, you know, scales up servers when we need them, because if you can imagine, most high school basketball games are on a Friday night, so we get a lot of volume uh, during that time. So we, we you know, purchase servers from Amazon, rent servers for a short amount of time, scale up, scale down automatically. And we, we take the video at 720p, and we process it down to, we have a 420p copy and a 240p copy. So that's going to give you a lower bit rate that you need or lower bandwidth that you need to watch video. So if I'm watching it on a 3G network on an iPhone, I don't need 720p coming all the way to me. Um, I can just use the lower quality. And that happens automatically using Apple's uh, HTTP live streaming, which um, if you don't know anything about HTTP live streaming, that is uh, it's an open protocol that Apple puts out there. Um, a lot of your video, a lot of your web video is moving towards that or a similar uh, protocol that's offered by Google. It's called Dash. They're really similar. They're just kind of, uh, there's some difference in, the, in how the video is encoded. So uh, we use FFmpeg on the farm to process the video, to scale it down. Um, yeah, so and at this point, I've got this large basketball game recorded. But as you can imagine, if you've ever uh, been a coach or been an athlete in a film session, you're trying to review this video, um, it's, it's hard to find what you want to look at, right? It's hard to, like, what if you want to just look at the three-point shots or you want to look at a certain uh, pieces of the video and you don't want to have to be clicking through uh, up to an hour of video or a couple hours of video, whatever a game's going to add up to. Uh, we build a way for you to add metadata on top of your video. And the solution I'm going to show right now would be what we call live tagging. So this would be a scorekeeper that's going to be at the game. And they're going to be using our app to uh, stat the game. And we're going to automatically sync it up with the video so that they're able to uh, you know, manage their video and get through film session more efficiently. So 
if I show, it would be on a different app than what the filming uh, app would be. So if I'm going to demo it now here. It's like I'm a manager, and I'm going to demo the live tag and click tag a game. And uh, I'm going to say we're Agile High School, and we're playing mobile meetup, and I can switch the team color, and I can start tagging. So basketball is a, a state machine, meaning from any given point in time, there is a finite amount of stats that you can record until you get to another state. So you start out here. One of the teams is going to win the tip off. Uh, so I'll say the Omaha Mobile demo live tag one, and then we're going to adjust the options based off what could happen from there. So you see Omaha Mobile demo live tag has the ball, and uh, thus they have the offensive options, and the other team has the defensive options. So if they get a two-point two field goal attempt, I'm going to mark that as a make, and we're going to just toggle those options uh, all the way through. Now, um, once, these, uh, once the stats are, are recorded, uh, they're going to be uploaded to our servers as well, and we're going to do matching uh, using some intelligent matching on the video so that you can uh, quickly scroll through and see where these marks would show up at your video. Because remember, keep in mind, like I'm the uh, manager that's statting the game live. We also have a tool where you can go online and you can watch the video and add your stats on stats in on top of that. So uh, we call that post game breakdown. So I can mark a timeout, uh, advance to the next period. Uh, yeah, so this is live tagging. Uh, now let me show you what the end result would be. Uh, so I'm going to mark this game is over. And I'm going to switch over to another team where I've got a sample. And I had some issues with this build earlier, but I think it's going to work this time. It is? OK, so I'm watching video here. I can go up to the menu. Looks like this one doesn't have any team stats. Let me try this one. OK, so if I go to team stats here, you can see I, I, can, I can click through these and find all the rebounds. So I've got 41 rebounds. And now if I want to watch my team get a rebound, I can just click that, and then I can advance through to the next rebound. Um, so you see, I don't have to watch the whole the whole game, I can easily manage uh, and jump around to the spots that are of interest to me. Uh, additionally, I can draw. Like so here, if I want to uh, call out to my players that you know, we need to go on a run here, I can save that. And then that's going to be saved for my players, my athletes to view later. Uh, I can do notes. I can also create highlights from this. So uh, if I'm an athlete and I want to create my highlight that I want to send to recruiters, you can build that using. Uh, watching the video here. So uh, Yeah, so those are the active marks. So for example, if I pull up uh, the team stats shooting, here's the points in the video that have shots tagged, which I think rebounds there was, there was more of. So these are just the points in the video that, that I'm going to skip to. So I can also, also manually dra uh, you know, dr drag drag ahead in the video if I want to view that at that particular point in time. But yeah, so uh, I don't think I've missed anything. So yeah, so this is, this is HTTP live streaming. So if you're not familiar with that protocol, you only have to download a segment of video before you can start playing. So our video is chopped up into uh, four second fragments right now. So that's why I get really quick, quick playback when I sync to a particular point in the video. I only got to download a couple megabytes of video before I can start playback right away. Um, on the iPad, we also have a way for you to download in offline mode if you want to have all the video on your, on your device. So if, you go, uh, if you're on a bus ride home, you don't have Wi-Fi, you can review the video there. So any questions? Yes? Um, it seems like you guys got it pretty well nailed as far as the input, the stats input. Yep. What about the output, like trends? Yeah, that's a problem we have at Huddle, actually. And <laughs> so there's a bunch of tools that we have on our web tool, uh, our website that we don't have on iOS yet. A couple of them are like shot charts. Uh, we have a run graph, so you can see where your team is. Like if you were down, you know, you can see the score differential over time. Um, and I think that as far as the trends, there's 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 more we could do there. That's a really good idea. Um, that's all we have right now, basically. We have, we have stats. Like we have a general stats page that you can pull up and view your average across the whole season. Um, yeah. A lot of other teams, too, across the 
So you can, you can pull down, the, if they exchange you video, that's a, another big part of the Huddle platform is video exchange. So uh, previously, you know, coaches would have to drive out and meet and exchange DVDs or whatever. Uh, Huddle automates exchange as long as your other team has a Huddle account as well. Um, it, they, can, they can choose to send you stats. Let me, let me correct myself. If you have stats and they have stats uh, and you exchange, your stats will be traded as well. Um, if they don't have stats, then they won't be traded, but then you can, you can stat their games if you want to. So, And uh, Huddle is piloting a program uh, this year we're calling Huddle Assist, which we just announced uh, a couple weeks ago, where we're actually going to break down the games as a service for the coaches. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so the data science team did that. So um, they auto they auto generate highlights based off crowd noise. Right. Yep. So that was just one and they were gonna look into different different heuristics, but their first blog post they said, Well, let's go by crowd noise, that usually means something big. Yeah. Um, can you well, say I want to uh, say, I'm going up to a certain point in the game and I wanna say, Oh, this is a highlight for me or this is a rebound. Yep. Do I have to pick out of a list of 20 options rebound, or is the system sort of smart and no, a it down to like five things that are likely to be on the spot? So a highlight for us is just a segment of video. We don't attach the metadata to say what kind of highlight it is. Um, we just attach it to, uh, that's a playlist. So what you do is you attach the highlights onto players, um, and then it just goes into their highlight reel. Probably going to be a few seconds till they get onto the other side of the field and score again. Yeah. So you use that to make the number of options on the screen smaller, so people don't have 20 different things to pick. Oh yeah, when you're tagging. Right. When you're uh, tagging. So you can you, can you make the tagging you show that. Much shorter yeah. by sort of yeah. what's most likely to be. Yeah, absolutely. When you're live tagging, we only show the finite number of options that you can that can happen for that situation. So, if the white team has the ball, we're only going to show the defensive options for the black team. Um, not, no, that's, that's just done. We just maintain the state of where you're currently at in your live tag. So like we know what team has the ball. So those are all just statically mapped to the current options that, that you can tag from there. So, yep, nothing goes to the back end for that right now. Cool. Yep. So we, we can add uh, player stats. Let me see if I can uh, pull that up. I don't think we have player stats on this particular event. You can add uh, yeah, player stats after the fact that you can go tag like who shot the two point, and then you could view that particular player's. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have, to, you have to manually do it. And that's what we're piloting with Huddle Assist, where Huddle will actually do that as a service for you. We'll tag your games and tag them to the player numbers. Um, that's starting with, like, I think there's only like 100 teams that's going to be in it for the first year. So, um, yep. If I might add one more thing. Uh -huh. In football, uh, parents also get involved in live tagging, and they help out coaches. So it's actually also a cool experience to be one of the, you know, one of the, yeah. you know, my kid is playing football and I'm sitting on the sideline and helping the coach with live tagging. Yep. So you, you could potentially have the iPad taking a video and also you're sitting with another iPad live tagging and they all exactly. work together. Uh, no, some of the big data bars are able to track like shoppers, right? I don't have to keep following on the camera. I just sort of mark that person and the cameras, then the algorithm tells me. To follow that first. Yeah, sure. We're doing some some R and D on computer vision, but we don't have anything uh, like that yet. So. Wouldn't the crowd noise thing only work for the home crowd? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, I'm not familiar with what the data science I mean, team I did. Um. We're gonna use lots of different things, but crowd noise was an easy way to get started. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How long did it take to develop? So. Uh, the Flow video platform, so what I've showed is, is mostly, is relatively new compared to Huddle's larger clip-based stack. Um, as far as I know, it's been under development for like two and a half years. Um, I might be a little bit off on that. I've only been at Huddle six months, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so. So do they use 
same thing for soccer too? Yeah, so soccer would fall under a flow-based uh, category. It's a little bit different. We have customizations for basketball, uh, and then we're, we're working on some customizations for soccer, but it is ultimately the same underlying platform. Cool, yeah. Questions, but, um, yeah. You they were doing vision research. Been a little bit. I'm not familiar with a lot of. I, I, that's all I know basically. Is we're doing some, yeah, <laughs> computer vision. Re, yeah, we're focusing a little bit on computer vision, but. I know one of the founders is John Worth. So John yeah. Pestering him for years, saying, "Dude, you got to put in three or four cameras and do mocap so people can pan and zoom around the field, basically make a 3D model of what happens." To sure, that and would be. Told me, well, when we get bigger, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that would be interesting. It's, we've just started on that, so there's not. Um, yeah, a lot that we have production ready, but it's hopefully in the future. So, any other questions? Okay, yeah, it died. Well, I think I'm at my 15 minutes. Um, one other app that I was going to show that I might not have time to show would be Ubersense. Uh, and it's going to be f uh, focused on like individual techniques. So it's going to capture at like a high frame rate for good slow motion viewing. If you guys want to check that out, it's something, there's a good free trial out there. Actually, you can start using that right away if you want to improve your golf swing. So, yeah. So, there's more tools. So. Yep. All right. All right. <clears throat> um, so, my name's Mark. I work at Agape Red. Been doing Android development for a little while here. And uh, uh, if you've come to these before, I've shown this once before, and I tend to get the most done right before I have to show it to anybody. So it's, <laughs> it, looks, uh, it looks better than it did before. Not a whole lot better, because I was mainly working on the API side of it. But uh, it's uh, coming along. So it's, uh, this isn't associated with Agape Red at all. Um, this is something I've built on the side, but it's kind of inspired from working at Agape Red. We work downtown on 12th and Harney, right? And there's a lot of food trucks. Um, there's more than you think if you don't hang out downtown or in Benson. There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's quite a few. And uh, you know, like today, actually, we uh, all tried to go to local, Locomotive. It's supposed to be uh, right next to Ted and Wally's, right? Great food. We walk over there, they have a set schedule. We walk over there, guess what's not there? Locomotive. They were not there. <laughs> yeah. What they just weren't there. They didn't, they didn't update their Twitter. I didn't say anything poorly about them on Twitter, but somebody else did. And I was like, whatever, man. Do what you got to do. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah. So they have a set schedule, and they weren't there. So this is kind of the idea of the, behind this is just super bare bones, super, like, you know, not a whole lot of, a whole lot of fancy things going on. That maybe down the road it could be something that, you know, uh, you could add a lot more features to. But pretty simple straight off the bat, right? I mainly, wrote, I mainly built this app to learn uh, Ruby on Rails, which is the services are written in. The Android side is, is easier for me because I'm an Android dude. But uh, yeah, so that's what has held me up the most. But I'll just kind of walk you through very simply how it works from the beginning. So if you're not aware, this is where we are right now. We're at, we're at right on the corner of 72nd and Mercy-ish, right? So that's where we are. And uh, you can open up the map a little bit. You can start seeing trucks. I uh, put, I stole that icon off of Google. So before I release this, I need to change that icon. <laughs> um, and um, all, it's only one API call. It's very simple. All it's doing is saying, what food trucks are closest to me? So it's, as of right now, actually, it's not doing that. That's something I'm working on on the, on the server side. But uh, when, what, what I will do is say, what's closest to me? As of right now, just all the data that's on the server, on the Ruby on Rails server. And uh, you can just like move around the map. You can get a little bit bigger. You can see your entire city. You can get a little deeper. You can click on one of these food trucks. And this is not a food truck, it's at Walmart. But uh, I, I just put in I just put in locations so we get some data in there, and then um, the great thing about the uh, maps maps API, you know, you're using Android. The maps API is is you know really strongly supported, and as soon as you click on one of your markers on your map, if you didn't notice, you see that on the bottom right there's no icons there. As soon as you click on your markers on your map, those little things pop up, and you just tap one, opens up maps for you. And now you can start navigating to where it is. So say it's right down the block. You know, it's midnight and you're in downtown. You can say, OK, I'm starting nav navigating. It's in beta. Use caution. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm not great at this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so now you can navigate to where it is. This is walking directions, actually. You're probably not going to want to walk, want to walk there, but you could if you wanted to. It's not too far. But yeah, so um, very simply, that's pretty much what we got going on here. Another thing that's been added lately 
if I go back to the app, so you can see all the stuff here, and um, I can pull off to the left here. And all of the food trucks are, that are close, that are that will closest to us will be are here. Um, I'm going to sort these by uh, um, how far they are from you. You know, so the one at the top is closest one for you, but also maybe your favorite food truck is on this list, so you can. Uh oh, the rotation screwed me up. Always. <laughs> I'll close it again. Rotation, man. It's a. Yes. So, um, those of you that aren't Android developers, if you. Um, what is this saying right now? When you change rotation on um, Android, your um, activity is actually redrawn. So you'll have to um, make sure you save all your state when you r rotate the device, which I didn't do correctly, apparently. <laughs> there we go. So you have your list on, on the left side there. It'll, it'll be um, organized by whatever closes you to the top. Maybe your food truck isn't as close to you as you want it to be, so you can have the list on the left side. And then you can click on one of these um, things, which is all your markers on your, on your map. You can click one, and it'll just move the map to where you're, where you're trying to go. So if you want to look at the Walmart one, you can go back over here. If you want to go back to the Papillion truck, you're back down south. And uh, yeah. <laughs> It's basically just uh, you know a passion project. So I'm working on the side, mainly learn Ruby on Ruby on Rails. So all this stuff is you know stuff that I've I've uh, all, all the information is coming from this from my my device right my device right here the Ruby on Rails server that I have lo running locally. I'm eventually going to spin up a droplet on a on a DigitalOcean and get that all served up so that everybody can use it wherever. But it's not going to be narrowed by location because if you've ever you know gone to another city. There's food trucks apps out there, but they're um, very um, city based, like oh, San Francisco, Portland, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, they all just um, they they all are just focusing on their city. And I'm just going to make sure that the API is robust enough that it can support. Well, I'm just only going to um, send you the food trucks that are within five, ten miles, so you can use it wherever you want to. It's not really limited by, by location. How do you how do you Mark where a truck is. Is that going to be you know, based on some sort of schedule, or is that just user kind of user input kind of thing? So crowd crowdsourced kind of. Thing? See, that's the hardest part. Um, and um, if I can cast my computer real quick. Get them to put a, like a QR code on the side of their truck, and then people can go up and scan it and go, yeah, I actually scanned it. There I was. Oh, right I, there. I, I don't cast this. Your competitors will tell you Yeah, exactly. See, see, see verified, that's verified truck spotter. See, that's the hardest part, <laughs> and I think the only way to get any type of accuracy with it is to um, have them all the uh, food trucks themselves update their own, own location, and um, I don't know why I can't cast this. Tab. You know, I go to DC a lot, and this would be great in DC because they have such a huge food truck. Up. And you never know which food truck you're going to find at least. <laughs> because they keep rotating. You know, I can't get that paired. Anyway, so um, basically the idea behind um, the uh, actual location being uh, pushed up to the server is just having a simple mobile web website. And all, all it is is a simple, because um, that's part of the, the biggest part of the complexity of this is that part. Because I want the part that the user use itself super simple. I don't want them to put in any information. I don't want to have to deal with like verifying anything. You know, I, I just want them to be able to look at it and go. That's it. Very simple. The hardest part is actually updating the location of, of the trucks themselves. And uh, th that's and that's why I've, I've been I've been re removing complexity. I was thinking, oh well, what if this food truck only uses Facebook? What if this food truck wants to um, make their own um, sign-in password? But we've all used a lot of websites that make sure that, you, that that not make sure, but one of the options is a Twitter feed, right? And what does any self-respecting food truck have? A Twitter feed. So I was like, screw everything else. 
you just have to Twitter. Like, if you don't have Twitter, set one up because how is, how's anybody going to find you anyway? I'm not sure how you're in business anyway if you don't have a Twitter feed. <laughs> so, like, you know, that is, I think that, I think this, this making it so they, they just use Twitter, so they, they, they make sure they have that account, and there's a OAuth on Ruby on Rails and all, the, all, these, other, all these other services where you can just pull in their, their token from Twitter, and then after they update the location, all they do is put in a simple address. Okay, this is where I'm going to be. This is how long I'm going to be there. And then at the, at the end, when they after they submit it and they say this is where I'm going to be, I say how many hours are you going to be there. And then at the end of that, there, it's that that's going to expire. But then before when they actually um, say okay, this is where I'm going to be, like double check, you know, are you sure? Then I'll give them the option so I can tweet for them. So like I think one of the hardest parts uh, is you know with any type of service like this is you know the business owner saying well. I, just, I can just update this on Facebook and Twitter myself, right? But if I, you know, if not make make it with less steps, at least in as many steps as they normally do, then they they, they don't really have anything to argue about. You know, if they're going to update their Twitter feed anyway, just log into mine. I'll update their Twitter, Twitter feed for them, and then they can go and update their Facebook too if they want to. You know. I actually had a similar idea. What I was going to do is have the food truck check in with the GPS once they get there. Mm -hmm. Once they start moving, that's when you cancel them out. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Um, yeah, I was I'm just basically trying to remove as much complexity as as I could. Really, um, that's a, that's a good idea too. But um, I mean, if you did it within the the native um, app itself, um, you know, it's easy. If I did it with the Android app itself, but uh, you know, if I wanted to wanted it to be something that maybe if I if they just had an iPhone and I just have the Android version released, then they could still have to update the location in another. Uh, you know, another way. So that, that was my way of getting around that. Anybody else? Um, I, I like what he said about GPS. I, there was, so I was working at a startup weekend and somebody thought about a food truck app as a startup weekend business. Mm -hmm. And one of the barriers I ran into is it turns out a lot of the people who get a job driving a food truck, at least at the time, didn't have mobile phones because there's somebody who drives a food truck. When was that? Okay, I was I was just gonna say I, I'm not sure if I've ever seen any food truck that doesn't have at least a mobile phone on it that probably is running Square that does their mobile payments. You know what I mean? So maybe that's not a consideration. But so the, the GPS, the people who own the food truck, not necessarily the people who drive it, probably might want to have a GPS device on it just to know where it is. Mm -hmm. so that GPS location changes, boom, you're to kick in. So. It's true. Yep. Yep, I can get further into implementation of like how the actual Android app works if anybody's interested. You know, the, I mean, the, probably the hardest part was of it is just making sure you have your Google Maps uh, um, key registered with uh, the Google Play services, but that just takes you a little bit. It's nothing too crazy. Can you store the uh, location by like, GPS coordinates, or like just just have it as addresses? Let maps figure it out. Uh, a little bit of both. So the server, so, so the my Ruby on Rails server uses um, a gem called GeoCoder. If you put in your address, um, it'll get you the lat long, and then um, it's passing the lat long and the address to the app, so that the you know the user doesn't care what the lat long is, but the app might. Right. So the user can see what the address is, but if they go to actually locate it, it'll pull in the lat long and get you there. Hey, I was, th you know, this is this is not limited to to, yeah, this is not limited to food trucks, you know. Specifically, move. I mean, they're moving all the time. And they're ringing that freak. <laughs> but you could ring the bell on their phone. There. Oh man, yeah, that wouldn't be annoying at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's ideas of like, you know, oh, push notification if a food truck near you says that, oh, you know, I'm close closer to you. But I, you know, dealing with people, like, you know, I hate push notifications on my phone most of the time anyway. So I imagine most people feel the same way. So I'm not sure if that's even a way to go. But, you know, I just want something simple, something that works. You can look at it, you use it, and then you put it back in your pocket. You don't need, you don't need to look at it that much more. Other than, yeah, that's it. All right, well, thanks, guys. Bars is essentially a really easy way to set up a back end using, um, I forgot the official name for it, um, but like you don't need to set up your own servers, you don't need to set up anything, all you do is create parse objects in your um, application. 
create parse object, objects in your application and then um, just, it's a really easy API where you just send them up to the server and it handles it all out for you. Put that on there. Okay. One sec. Yeah, this is not my app. <laughs> I mean, it is, but this is not all to it. <laughs> okay, so I got this pulled up. Yeah, this is everyone's heartbeat combined in the room right now. <laughs> no, um, okay, so my app is a way to attach digital content to physical things using QR codes. Um, so the digital content consists of more social content. Um, so the main components of my app is there's um, an area where you can draw stuff, there's an area where you can just write anything you want, and there's an area where you can uh, give your opinion on something. And um, the way I like to think about it is, you ever been to a bar or coffee shop or somewhere that has a bunch of writing in the bathroom stalls, you know? You get a bunch of drawings and you get a bunch of random comments about the world and some great wisdom here and there. Um, <laughs> it's essentially that, but um, in the form of QR codes and using the app. So each QR code itself is unique and the only way to access the content is through that exact QR code. So you can't, um, you can't get any other content, you can't get that same content anywhere else except for that exact code. Um, so let me just run through it. So you have this uh, little scanner here. Um, you come up to a QR code, this is a pre-made QR code I made, and you scan it. Um, so what you get is really three main screens. You get a draw section, a write section, and I couldn't think of a good word, verb for opinion, so I put consider. I think that works. Um, so you can give your opinion on something. So the first section here is um, an area to draw. So this is just a list of different drawings. I made these drawings earlier. Um, my artwork's great, I know. And that's supposed to be an Android guy. I think I accomplished it pretty well. Um, keep it on the theme of all Android today. Um, <laughs> I got more of it We're <laughs> later in the app, just wait. Um, so yeah, just different drawings. So you can come in here, you can see what previous people who scanned this QR code have uh, drawn, and you can also contribute to it. So if you wanted to, I don't know, create some lightning bolts coming down on this guy, you could do, oh, is that a lightning bolt? <laughs> close, enough, close enough. So yeah, you can just throw that in there, and, um, and that's forever saved on this QR code. Um, yeah, so you can draw your own picture. picture. I want to draw a little smiley face. What? Yeah, how far does it scroll? It scrolls depending on how many images have been posted to this code. Um, so, so you're drawing over white images? Well, yeah. Um, so there's only three images here, but if I wanted to create a new image, you click this tab right here, um, and then it creates a new area, like a new canvas for you where you can draw whatever you want on it. Um, so it opens it up. So you can, it's a, you got free reign, and you can write letters, hello. Everybody? Okay. So yeah, um, so it's a way to add content to, you, you can add to existing drawings or you can create your own. Um, and you can add as many uh, different blank canvases as you want. Um, so you can only imagine as time goes on, this, these drawings will probably get a little more crazy, <laughs> um, for better or worse. Uh, and What's yeah. vision as far as where you'd come across this QR code? I, guess, I mean, I guess you could post it. People could come across QR codes posted in. Well, you, you need some. Zoom's not the world. Right. <laughs> you, the thing is. I'm trying to get away from that exact uh, example and just try to figure out what. What example? Sorry, I didn't hear it. The men's room example. Oh, I mean, that's a great example. Dude, you, you always laugh when you go in there. <laughs> Don't lie. Um, but I mean, there would have to be uh, a specific uh, QR code registered by me. Um, and there would be some sort of signifier on it, so it can't just be any of them. You can't just attach it to the one you see at the grocery mart. Um, and I was thinking more of in the form of stickers. You could throw it on your laptop, you can throw it on um, your notebook, you can throw it on wherever you really want, your car um, and whatnot. And so it really just depends on where people want to put them. That's what it comes down to. Um, Mark, yeah. Well, like, like, like I, another example I think, like, you know, a sticker on the back of a park bench or something like that. Right, yeah. Scan the QR code, and, it, and it, if you don't have the app installed, it prompts you to do so, and, it, and after you have the app installed, it registers this. Right. So are you just like walking around the old market randomly, and you see this on the brick wall or something? You could associate certain yeah. QR codes yeah. with the apps. 
console, it'll know to, to install well, the app? Uh, see, I don't know. That would be a little tricky because you can't even use a link. Well, maybe you could use a link. I could parse it out. I would have to look into that. I would just, um, uh, initial thought was just have a, just a unique code if you have the app open. Um, I'm not sure about the well, link. That's how, I mean, that's how, like, you know, ad campaigns work. It's like, oh, um, scan this QR code in the back of this ketchup bottle, and it goes to, like, you know, Heinz's website. You know, like, that's how all those campaigns work. It's, 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 a, it's a string, you know? Right. So, but it would be hard to make the middle ground between giving a link and giving a unique QR code that would create a unique content. Could we combine it? Yeah, I'm sure there would be. Yeah. I don't know if that would screw up the link to the app, though. I mean, all you need is the content at the end of it, yeah. and if if, you, if your server can handle that, you know, actually a good idea. I didn't yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but it could screw up. I was thinking about that. Like, how do I? Screw up on the App Store side, though. Like, uh, if they don't update the on Android. On Android, you can set it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 <laughs> that's the same on Android. What you can do is you can, uh, you can register a domain to be with, uh, um, like, in like an app or something like that. So, there you go. So like basically, uh, the, if you have the app installed and you're listening for that, then you basically you just completely override it and you say the app handles it. Uh, I don't know if you can do that on the iOS side because iOS side is just like schemas. I don't know if you can override URLs. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, schema you can, but not, you not like a uh, regular domain, right? You can't override www.google.com. Oh, certainly. So, so yeah, basically, I was talking about making an actual URL. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the drawing section. Uh, so there's another section where you can just it's more of just a free write where you can just write whatever you want. Um, fill load. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is a plug for the new Android meetup <laughs> starting up. Um, but yeah, you can so you, you can write anything you want. Um, you can make any sort of comment your heart desires. Um, so I'm just going to randomly press letters. I think it's, I think it's German for Android. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you can post any, any type of comment you want or any post you want. And you can also comment on posts, um, like who brought the Bud Light Lime. A sad soul did. Uh, no. <laughs> and then you can make comments on it. So you can make comments on other people's um, posts, and then you can scroll through them. Um, so yeah, this this gives you the ability, you know, just to kind of rift off what other people say, <laughs> and uh, you know, add your little two cents, whether it's needed or not. Where? Sold, the whole oh, there, there's, you, you click, I mean, something I need to do is fix the UI a little bit, but yeah, you, if you click on the right, on the right half of this, it'll, it'll scroll you to the left and right. Um, so like right now I'm clicking on the far left side where the, I think those, I mean those look like arrows. Um, I think they look like arrows, but then you click on it and it scrolls you back and forth. So you can see the comments, you don't have to like click on the comments button to actually see the comments, so it kind of gives you a preview of it. Um, yeah, that's that's the draw, uh, just the write whatever you want section. Um, and the last section, I thought it'd be cool to include. <laughs> this is before I got here, so. <laughs> wow. Um, it's in the air tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, I haven't quite figured out who poses the question, um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's that's one of the challenges to figure out who who actually asked the question. But uh, you can, you know, someone asks a question. I think you get some interesting content by posting a question out there and you know seeing all the different opinions on it. Um, uh, the one cool thing about this app is you know it, it's in a fixed location and a lot of different people come through that same location of all sorts and types and you know you kind of get a different worldview um, just by seeing answers to people who have come across the same area as you. And I think there would be some cool content coming out of this uh, page just based on you know, all the different people in the world that you have no idea are coming in the same place you are. Um, so, so like the other one, you, know, you, can, you can give your own answer. Um, I'm just going to put just because. <laughs> That's all I need to say. No. Uh, um, so yeah. Um, Pretty pretty simple. I'm, I'm using Parse as a back end. 
Um, so I want to write my own um, APIs and whatnot. Uh, I'm using Green.io as my ORM to store all the data um, on the Android. Uh, on that first screen, if you ever use the, I think it's like, it's spelled like ZX, I don't know how to say, ZXING. It's, on, it's the main barcode scanner you see around. Um, they have an, it's open source. So my initial thought was try to hack into that and gut out everything I don't need and then implement my app. But that didn't work. So I just used this, someone else's. Uh, they created like a whole view for it. So I just used that to use as a barcode scanner. And it just returns whatever scanned. Um, I'm trying to think what else I would I use in it. Um, Respond just a little bit on what parses. Is it something that gets loaded through OSGI or something? What is it that you're you're not deploying an app? You're deploying some. So parse. I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it. Parse is. Um, I guess I could Google it. Right. It, it's it's an easy way to um, set up. It's an easy way to store data on a remote server. So the process of creating, um, just say this this post right here, you create a new parse object. Um, which would be uh, named, just say in this case, opinion. Um, and then you, you would add the fields to it um, with a key and value and whatnot. And then you would write your content, add that to the parse object, and click Save. And this way, it will upload it to the server. So next time you come across it, you, can, you, you know where it's at, and you retrieve it down and bring it. So basically, you just have like a model, and then you just, hit, you just do dot .save, but then that model. Right. I'm trying to think of, there's like a terminology for it. I've never used it before. It's a very like. It's like a JSON right. blob database. Like, it's like Firebase almost. Um, I think it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It, it's actually a database on that side. But you can actually do API. And it gives you a whole interface. You can see all the records. And, and paid service? Um, no, it's, it's free up until. It's like a. So it's, you get enough trolls like it's, arguing about iOS and Android. <laughs> and <laughs> no, it's it's actually quite a bit. Anybody remember how much it is request a second? It's like a maybe a hundred requests a second for free. Oh wow! It's a lot of what you get. Um, and like a lot of storage. I think it was. Yeah, it, it's 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 free for a while, and you won't start paying for it until people actually really start using your app. It's not Facebook, right? Uh, bought, yeah. bought by Facebook, bought by yeah. Facebook. Um, so it's a, it's a really quick and easy way, if you don't have any um, web development experience, to set up a back end for your app. Um, and it's pretty easy to use. It's pretty flexible. Um, it, it, it does the basics. You know, It gets data, and you can post it. And, um, so it made my life easy, because I have really not any experience with web development. So um, was it to set up the draw page? Is that all custom done by you? Or uh, yeah, so these are just normal image views. Um, and what I had to do for the extra draw section is create a custom view where I take two bitmaps or two images and combine them in one. Um, and then I have to create a custom view. So any draw event, um, any touch event will record the path that you draw. And then there's an on draw function in custom views. So um, every time the user moves their finger or whatever, it redraws the whole view and then um, records the color and whatnot. Um, like I said, I need to clean up the UI a little bit. I have a little um, picker at the bottom right to pick the different brush sizes. I got to clean that up a little bit. Um, but you can also pick different brush sizes. And I'm hoping to add, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of different things you can do to add content to this. You can increase the number of colors, increase the styling of the brush, and I don't know, there's upload videos or upload pictures. And Where are you storing those pictures, and how will you handle concurrent users? Um, that's the, one of the things with the app, and that's one of the big challenges is, well, I'm storing the images on Parse. Um, they, they do all that. Um, but that was one of the premises of the app, which is kind of hard to do with Parse, is I wanted to have only one person can view this at one time. So it's the, you can't have multiple people on here at once. Um, or else it'll kick you out and won't let you scan the app. Um, but uh, you need a little more custom code than what Parse provides for that. So you can probably let them view it, just not edit it. Right. Well, I mean, oh. It's all based on a physical location, right? Isn't that problem kind of solved? 
Like if I scan the back of a park bench and I'm drawing, like someone else would have to walk up next to me. Right. And, and it's, it's so like I said, it's really rare, but so it could if happen, though. I know what was going on. It wouldn't be like just in the class. I mean, the app's going to look so cool. Other people are going to want to scan it, too. And you get a mob of people, and then it could be a problem. <laughs> See, I have a timer set up to where it's, right now it's at like two minutes, and it'll auto log you out after two minutes. Um, and yeah. The Android app logs you out, or the server on through Parsec does? Um, the Android app logs you out. Um, so yeah, which I really don't like doing, but I'm trying to find a better solution for it. But I have a timer running in the background every time you do a user, every time you do a touch event, it resets the timer for two minutes, and then it, when that timer runs out, it takes you out of the app. For this, some sort of like virtual graffiti thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I thought Rift was cool because it was like the rift between the digital and physical world. But then, a lot of rifts. Yeah, the, lot look of up rift on. A couple just in this room, actually. <laughs> <laughs> look up. <laughs> look up rift on uh, the Play Store, and there's like 30 apps for different games. It's like. Um, you are stall? I don't know, yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> the problem is I'm avoiding the stall because it's kind of bad connotation. <laughs> um, I, thought, I thought niche would be a cool name because it's kind of like its own little crevice, its own little, each one is kind of a unique own little area in the digital world, physical, yeah. Um, Sounds about like digital tagging or something like right. that. I like the name Nook, but Barnes & Noble took it. So <laughs> Yeah, hopefully they'll go under soon. No. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so I, I think the best, I don't know, niche. I think niche is one of my favorites, but yeah, I don't know. To go back to the this automatic sign out thing, I would think maybe not so much with the drawings, but especially with, and I, I guess this just depends on how you want it, but. If you were to pose a question, it'd be kind of boring if you never can see what people said back. Right. So I don't know if it's you have to walk back to that location, or maybe you can have like a history, and so you can't edit it after two minutes without scanning again. But maybe right. you can still view, view what people only, are. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's connection in it, so like you can share accounts, and if you are scanning a certain code, only like certain mm -hmm. people that you're attached to can scan that. Right. Um, It'd be kind of a certain mystery behind yeah. it. You did actually have to go back and scan. <laughs> right. So I like that aspect of it, is kind of not knowing what's there, and you know, your time's up, and next one you see, you'll have a chance to scan it again. It's kind of the new geocache. Right. Um, you have it in Barstow. Whoa, no. Hey, it works. <laughs> um, that was a demo of that one. Yeah. Most important feature. Uh, um, I was going to say something on that. Um, what were we just talking about? Geocache? Geocache, no. Um, read only back. Back. Oh, yeah, OK. Um, I, always, I thought that would be a good way to get um, as incentive. But the problem right now is there's no really incentive for someone to want to buy a sticker of this or uh, some merchandise with it. Um, it's, uh, it would be a little incentive if, if you could see all the logs of all the ones you bought. Um, so maybe looking back on that once you buy, like, like if you're the owner, right? If you own it, you can see everything. But if not, you have to wait until the next occurrence of it. Um, if you let them print it out, like a band would love to do that. Print it out, let people mess with their stuff, draw funny pictures of themselves. You know? Right. Yeah. Come to think of it, can't. I mean, I don't. Want, I'm not trying to. Yeah. Well, I'll just say it. Could somebody <laughs> take a picture of it and post it? Well, OK. Anywhere? My logic on that is um, they can only use it with the app. So if they take the picture and post it somewhere else, more people have to download the app, and more people have to use it through the app. That's fine. I just I think if, if that's available, if you're going to have to solve the more people can be viewing it, editing it at the same time, right? Otherwise, people are going to go, oh, I guess somebody's in the Union Station sticker. And you know, which has now been posted on you know whatever Leonardo DiCaprio's Twitter feed. <laughs> got it, right? So now, like, I'll never be able to leave anything there. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you you could also whoever's big these days with you kids. <laughs> um, you could also use GPS for that. You know, you can kind of box it in with the GPS. Um, yes. Or it's some sort of look. Oh. 
if someone's going through that much effort, <laughs> I mean, like, for one for one sticker, like, they got they got other problems. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the just one, yeah. Um, Brand their stickers. Yeah. They could put their brands in there. Yeah, you can, you can load images in the QR codes. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. What, what library did you use for the QR code? Um, it's like ZXING. It's, it's an open source QR code library. And um, there's a lot of uh, other apps that like make it more easy to incorporate in the views. Right. The, the open source is just the whole app, but you have to find like the separate helper libraries to actually incorporate it, um, unless you want to gut it out and implement it yourself, which I don't recommend. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my kind of thought on that is just, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's like, you can't do anything about it. I think it, add, I don't know, maybe adds to it a little bit. I don't think it would. <laughs> Usually, the funnier content comes out of that. <laughs> Your opening idea was a bathroom stall. Right. I'm pretty sure censorship wasn't number one. Right. And it was only Ben's room. Right. Yeah. Well, have you heard the term MTP? Heard the term what? MTP. Uh-uh. Minimum time to penis. <laughs> you talk about in video games where you're making them, anytime you open up the world and people do anything like Minecraft, uh, in, inevitably somebody who's playing the game is going to create a penis. See, I'd put the MTP at about like a couple milliseconds. <laughs> That's probably the first first thought to people's minds, like, oh, let's draw this one. <laughs> what? No, but I feel like that'd be a cool feature moving. Yeah, the, the, the thing with that is, you essentially know. You can gather. But the thing is, you could probably gather enough info to figure out whose phone it is, who owns the phone, and then report them to the authorities. Right. I mean, I'm not. We're looking for good PR. Young children. Right. Uh, there are actually legal precedents. It's never gone all the way to the Supreme Court, but there are some legal precedents that, yes, the developers have some degree of, of uh, legal liability. It's yeah. Not so much that that you, it's not so much that you would get sued, thrown in jail successfully, is that you would be sued a lot, and it would cost you so much money that your business wouldn't be profitable. And that's why you have places like was it Club Penguin and a few others that introduce censorship for that reason. Yeah. Just have them put in their birthday when they sign up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> put a disclaimer. Right. Yeah. Well, when you, uh, when you put it on the app store, you say what age uh, you, you choose. Or before they even. Yeah. Before they even use it, I could put a warning or something. Well, I mean, like, the app store won't show it to them. I assume somehow. Right. Knows people think, I mean, Android knows people's right. ages. I don't know. But, like, now when you fill out your thing, it's, it, it puts you in that age group. Right. My kids right. You could you could do those well, to Facebook, well, right? Your kid yeah. Right. That's actually signing with Facebook, and <laughs> we won't use any of it, but we'll know if you do something. <laughs> if they do something wrong, then they'll automatically post back to their Facebook. <laughs> I'll just I'll just automatically post. I posted this. I posted. This. <laughs> yeah. I mean that. I mean that is. That is the challenge of it. Is you know, it's it's gonna happen, but there's ways around it. I feel like. Oh, and it integrates with NSA. <laughs> I think everything integrates with NSA. <laughs> but yeah, any other questions? Just, someone mentioned graffiti. I don't know what your liability would or wouldn't be, but it's generally illegal to put up stickers like in public parking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't condone it. <laughs> If it happens, yeah. I mean, I. I'm not liable for. Right, <laughs> right. I'll just post it. I don't. I don't condone it. I mean, you I can do it. I really see this like being used like by artists and stuff. Right. And then I can see people like totally commercializing it and like branding the crap out of it. Right.
popular. After you sold it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, my main goal is like I want someone to come across it and you know, kind of just like wonder and have a little mystery. Like, okay, what's what would happen? Like, what's what are people posting in here? And I feel like that's the key right there is um, how much effort it takes to take it out of your pocket and open it up versus you know how curious you are to see what's inside. And I think that's the case for a lot of apps, but. Um, I don't know. With having a unique code e on each one, I think that would kind of help. When you start it, you should like open up a gallery and like show all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, real artist, you know. Like, yeah. This is my Rent digital graffiti. Rent out an art museum. Yeah. I like how you think. It's a good one. Small block, small block, half block, little block, small block. That's my favorite. It's impression is really good. It's modern art, right? <laughs> exactly. Did you ever see Exit through the gift shop? Hmm? Did you ever see the movie mm -mm. Exit Through the Gift Shop? Is it it's worth about how graffiti artists, like, one guy, like, glommed on to the graffiti artist and but made it totally commercialized and then it destroyed yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. So where are you going with this next? Um, Right now, I initially started this, I thought it was a cool idea, and um, I kind of use it as a learning app. But I'm going to start like adding a little more features to it. Um, you know, I might put out some stickers around town and kind of see the response to it and see people actually use it, people actually like it, and what they put on it. Um, but I haven't really planned past that. Um, I kind of want to clean up the UI a little bit, you know, make it a little nicer, um, see if I can implement any material design stuff, and then, I don't know, test it out. I got a sticker printing machine, so I might go around, put some stickers up in some places, so. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just go to every restaurant, put stickers on the bathroom. <laughs> I'll be that guy. <laughs> Instead of doing the stickers, could you just do a picture of wherever you're at, kind of doing, you're contaminated with the X, or the long lap. What was that? So you take a picture? Take a picture of where, whatever it is instead of taking a picture of the right. symbol. Right. It has to be some sort of unique signifier, though, and then you have to analyze it. Even but if it's a park bench, you'd still have the XY. Right. right. Are you thinking the, uh, the stickers would just be like the name of the app and then the QR code? Right. You, I, I, you need some sort of unique design around the QR code so you can easily identify it. You need some sort of instructions of, OK, what do I do with this um, and the name of the app. So. Um, so there has to be a little bit of design around it. It couldn't just be a QR code thrown everywhere, you know. Um, so, yeah. Nice work, Victor. Cool. Yeah.